Today, I'm going to be listing you some of the features that I've loved about my Galaxy S10 Plus. In fact, features that I think are so good that I quite honestly would love them on my iPhone and I'm in fact jealous. So yeah, to all those people saying, ooh, Drew, are you jealous? Are you salty? Are you jealous because the S10 has these features? Yes, there are absolutely a ton of features I love about the S10 that I would like transferred onto the next iPhone if at all possible. Now I'm sure there's tons of people out there that are saying, oh my God, he's not the Apple sheep anymore. Oh my God, he loves Samsung. He's a Samsung sheep. If you want to make that comment today, I'll be perfectly fine with it. My S10 Plus review is still in the works. I'm still thinking about everything I'm gonna say and planning that out. And there's a lot of good things to say, a lot of bad things to say, but ultimately today is just about the good things that I want as an Apple sheep on my next iPhone. And don't worry, none of the features I'm talking about today are going to switch me over to Android permanently or make me break my Apple ecosystem any more than I already have. Today is about giving credit where credit is due to the Galaxy S10 Plus. Let's begin. First thing that I was pleasantly surprised by that I didn't think I would enjoy that much is the ultra wide lens on the Galaxy S10. I know I've spoken in earlier videos about how I personally didn't understand why so many people wanted the ultra wide lens. This is the first time I've actually tried one. I've heard about people using them and I always thought that telephotos are more applicable and more practical for everyday use. And for the most part, I still do believe that. And I thought that ultra wides were interesting, but kind of overrated. Now having one and having the option to switch to that ultra wide lens in my day to day photo taking or video recording, it is way cooler and way more fun than I ever thought it could be. What can I say? My opinion has changed now that I've actually tried the phone out myself. And now, even when I'm showing off this phone to people who aren't really into tech, when I show them that ultra wide lens, I usually get a pretty interested reaction. People going, whoa, holy crap, that's cool. Or whoa, this room looks huge. Or whoa, look at how we look. Like you can sit on opposite ends of the couch. And when you activate that ultra wide lens, it makes that couch look like it's a mile long. It's a really fun, addition to the camera that I think gets more people opening that camera app and trying new things and trying different angles. Not that I think ultra wide is more important than telephoto because I do think that telephoto lens is very, very crucial for a lot of photography and videography moments, but still that addition to the ultra wide just makes the experience all the more interactive. And I'm very happy to hear luckily from our analyst Quo that it's most likely going to be an option on the iPhone 11 max or whatever they end up calling it. Apple's bringing ultra wide to the iPhone, which I'm very pleased pleased to hear because I've loved it on the Galaxy S10 Plus. The next big thing that also we've seen a few leaks to suggest is coming to the next iPhone, but Samsung has already beat them to the punch. In fact, Huawei has already beat Samsung to the punch in this department. Reverse wireless charging. I think this is a huge advancement in technology that allows us to allow our devices to communicate more seamlessly, not so much with wires and cables, but being able to inductively charge another device via the back of your smartphone just means that battery is even more universal now. It's more easily shared than before. And even though I understand the S10 Plus charges other devices very, very slowly, 4.5 watts via wireless is not very much, even slower than that tiny charge brick that comes with all iPhones, if you thought the things could get that much more slow. But still, I don't think its main attraction is that you can charge other phones with reverse wireless charging. I do genuinely believe that a lot of people would take advantage of being able to charge smaller devices with much smaller batteries internally. That way, when you're on the go, and you need to charge whether it be your Galaxy Buds with the S10 and hopefully when the next iPhone comes out your AirPods you can just put your iPhone face down put your AirPods on the top or in this case your Galaxy Buds and have them charge up directly from the battery inside the phone and inductively the fact that I don't need a wire to charge up those headphones I think is really really futuristic and I really really hope that Apple's considering that and will add that to the next generation iPhones also of course with Apple selling so many Apple watches now seriously they're dominating that market not just in watches, but in wearables in general. A lot of people are buying and wearing Apple Watches now. Giving them all that option to charge their Apple Watch from their iPhone if they need to would be an immensely helpful situation. And of course, you can charge your Galaxy Watch from the Galaxy S10 as well, but I think that watch is far less common. But regardless, the technology is still really, really impressive and would love to see it on the next iPhone. Please, Apple, listen to this. So full disclaimer, those are the two big things I want. Everything else from 
the rest of the video is kind of smaller, but I still think worth mentioning. So one of them that may not feel like a big thing, but I think could make a big difference and a big help for Apple in the future is embedding the earpiece in between the metal and the glass. You notice that iPhones right now, they have that earpiece where the notch is, and that's part of the reason the notch is so wide on an iPhone. And part of the reason Samsung was able to get their camera hole, or as many people would call it, a floating notch, so small is because they embedded that earpiece, which is also their front-facing stereo speaker, by the way, in between the metal and the glass, which means that the bezel around the side of the phone can get much, much slimmer and much more thin. And if they did that on the iPhone, they could keep all of the same Face ID sensors they need right now, but have it in a much smaller, less intrusive notch, hopefully, which could be a noticeable improvement on the next iPhone to see that notch be much smaller and know that Apple's working on getting rid of it entirely. And that choice of embedding the earpiece is one step closer to getting to that day where we don't have notches at all. Another, I think, no-brainer feature that the S10 has that I would love to see on the next iPhone, USB-C. It's the best port. I think it's better than Lightning. I wouldn't care if I had to buy all new accessories because right now I mostly charge my iPhone on wireless chargers anyway. So if you're gonna have a port on the iPhone, I'd be perfectly fine with them going USB-C. I know the rumors are saying it's gonna stick with Lightning and I'm not excited about that, but still, I think it's smart that Samsung uses USB-C on their S10 and I hope Apple can at least surprise people and go ahead and switch to the last port now that the iPad Pro has USB-C. We know that Apple is okay with USB-C on iOS devices. We're just not sure if that means the iPhone yet, but good thing that it's there. One port to charge everything and it's really, really cool that I can charge my MacBook, my iPad, and now my phone all with one cable, all with one charger. I think that's pretty impressive. Another feature that's not exclusive to the S10 itself, but I've used on this phone and I really kind of wish it was there on iPhones, being able to change the display resolution of the smartphone screen itself. Now, like I said, this isn't exclusive to the S10. You can do this with a lot of other Android devices, but in fact, the S10 out of the box ships at full HD. So it's by default, not utilizing all of the pixels available here, probably because they know that most people aren't really going to notice the difference between full HD and quad HD, where you take advantage of every single pixel the S10 has to offer. But having that lower resolution at full HD allows for much longer battery life if you want to. Now, I've actually raised my display quality to quad HD, so I'm utilizing every pixel there is, and the battery is still really, really good on the Galaxy S10. So lowering it to full HD must be even better than what I'm getting right now. And while the iPhones have really great displays and ultra high pixel densities, wouldn't it be kind of cool if you could lower the display resolution of the 10s or the 10s Max to be of a quality closer to that of the iPhone 10R? Because one of the reasons the iPhone 10R has such a great battery life is because the pixel density, as most of you know, on the 10R is not very high, but I think it's high enough. It's high enough that most people can't really tell the difference unless you start holding it really, really close. But at an average viewing distance, 10R, 10s display quality, they're both fine. They're both good. 10s is a little bit better, but ultimately, if you could lower the display resolution on the 10s Max and the 10s, you could, I think, maximize your battery life to be a lot longer than what you're getting right now. I'm sure many of you are assuming that I'm gonna say things like the camera hole instead of the notch or the headphone jack, but no, those aren't things I miss. And in fact, my experience with the camera hole has been pretty much no different than any smartphone I've tested with a notch. You get used to it, it's not really that noticeable, and in my opinion, camera hole isn't better or worse than a notch, it's just, like many have said, a floor floating notch. It's practically the same thing. It's just a slightly different design approach. But for the most part, I think those are the things that nail down what I like most about the Galaxy S10 that I wish once I inevitably switch back to my iPhone, I could take with me. These are things I'm going to miss once the review of the S10 is over and I head back to iOS. But don't worry, I'm not dreading it that much because as I said in today's video, I'm loving a lot of the features with the S10, but ultimately there's bigger features that I think make a bigger impact on day-to-day -day use that I'm missing about iPhone phones and I'm missing about iOS in general. So that's all the flattery you're getting for the Galaxy S10 from the Behold Apple Sheep on YouTube. Things I hope are going to be on the next iPhone and things I wish I could take with me, but ultimately they're going to have to stay on the Samsung phone until iPhones get any of these features. Let me know what features you're jealous of with the Galaxy S10 down in the comments below, or perhaps you're not jealous at all because you're on the S10 or you're getting the S10, all that good stuff. Let me know what you're thinking. This is your Apple Sheep here and I'll see you in the next one.